This is the part two of the video drop down list. If you missed the first video, which explains the basics of how to handle these two, you can check the link for that one on the description below. In this video, we will now understand how to expand the drop down list. First, we will demonstrate how to do it manually and then how to do it automatically, just so you can save a huge time at work. Let's do it. So in the part 2 of this video, we need to understand what actions we need to take in the drop-down list when you are expanding our dataset. For example, if you scroll down this sheet, you can see here at the bottom that you have now 10 new export entries, including Switzerland, which was not part of the original list. If you go back to the top of your sheet, you can see your unique list for countries has still a total of 13 countries and Switzerland is not located anywhere here. Therefore, this country will not show up in the drop-down list either. In addition to that, if you press F2 in this cell H5, you can check that the range arguments of this function are limited to the row 62 of your dataset, and we know this function will need to be adapted in case any new information is added here. So let's check how we can work with new data using both the manual techniques you learned in the part 1 of this video, as well as some advanced techniques which will make your drop-down list to become automatic. Before we start, let's create a new sheet by clicking on this plus sign button and let's copy all the contents of this first sheet by clicking on the corner up here. You can then press Ctrl C and paste it in this new sheet by pressing Ctrl V. After the data is pasted, we can then remove the grid lines in this menu page layout, decrease a bit the zoom and let's rename this sheet with the word manual. We can all compare the different approaches we can take when we need to expand our dataset. So to manually expand your dataset, first copy the new data you have at the very end of this spreadsheet and paste it in this section down here. When you scroll up to the top of this sheet, the first thing you can note is this alert in the cell H5, which tells you we are omitting adjacent cells in our function. When you press F2 in this cell and trace the range arguments of this function some ifs, we can then see this is indeed the case. So we know these ranges need to be manually expanded from the row 62 up to the row 72, as we now have 10 new entries in this list. So let's expand these ranges manually to each of these three variables. If you go back to the cell H5, you can see here the correct result for Japan has now increased by $20,000, which is consistent to the new data we received. However, if you try to pull out the information from Switzerland, which is a new country in our list, we will not be able, as there is no option for that country in this drop-down list. This is because our unique list of countries has not been updated yet. We then need to copy again this new range from column C and paste it as values in this column K using the paste special command. You can then select this entire range, click again on remove duplicates, mark this option continue with the current selection, click on remove duplicates and here click on OK. So now we have 14 unique values, but remember we only had 13 before. This additional country is Switzerland, which was added down here at the bottom of this unique list. However, as you have manually updated this list by removing duplicates, you need again to sort this list on alphabetical order, otherwise your drop-down list will not look nice. So let's then tackle this issue by using the filter tool this time. So select this entire range, press the shortcut Ctrl Shift L to activate the filter tool and here expand this menu and click on this first option to sort this data from A to Z. Now mark this option to keep the current selection in place and click on sort. To remove the filter, press the same shortcut again. If you then expand this drop-down list by pressing Alt arrow down, 
we can see this list is now sorted on an alphabetical order and Switzerland was correctly added here as well. However, we now have another issue. If you try to find USA in this list, you'll not be able. This is because the original drop-down list you created was limited to only 13 entries and now you expanded that number of entries to 14. You can double check that by clicking again in this data validation menu and here we can see that the field source is getting the data up to UK only. USA is just outside that list in the 14th position. To correct this issue, we then need to manually expand this field source as well and press enter twice. Only now you'll be ready to use this spreadsheet with the new data you received. And in case you receive further new data, all these manual steps should be followed again. As you can notice, this is not an efficient process as it takes time and you might generate misleading data as we can easily forget one of these manual steps we did. So let's check now how we can make this process automatic. To make sure your drop-down list automatically expands when you receive new data, you just need to follow three steps, which are all done in advance and only once. So let's get back to this first sheet to demonstrate how we can save time and avoid errors. The first step is to transform your original dataset into an Excel table. So select any cell of this dataset and press the shortcut Ctrl T to create a table. Make sure this option My Data Has Headers is correctly marked and press Enter. In this menu table design, we are able to keep the same format by clicking in this first option in the field Table Styles and let's also remove these filter buttons from the headers. There is a lot to talk about Excel tables, but for the purpose of this video, let's focus on what is relevant for the drop-down lists. If you scroll down to the very end of this dataset, you can see it now has this blue icon located at the bottom right corner. This indicates this is the current limit of your Excel table. In case I add more information in the row below, for example, this blue icon will also move to that row as Excel understands you want to expand your dataset. This is one of the key advantages of using Excel tables as any function linked to this dataset will also automatically adapt any time you expand it. We'll check the results of this adjustment in a minute. The second step you need to take is to extract the unique list of countries from your dataset using two array functions. The first one is the function unique, which is available for Office 365. This function extracts unique values from a range of your spreadsheet. So here, let's clear this range of column K and we can basically insert the function unique in this cell K4. In this case, you only need to worry about the first argument array, so select this portion of the column C, which contains the list of all country names from your dataset. Close brackets and press enter. This list of 13 unique countries will be automatically displayed here. Now, bear in mind that as this function is linked to an Excel table, any time you insert new information to your dataset, this function will also be updated, which means this list of unique countries will also be adapted to you. Note, however, that your unique list is not in an alphabetical order anymore. To make sure this sorting is also done automatically, you need to combine this function unique with another array function called sort. So insert that function just after the equal sign and press tab. The main argument of this function is the argument array, which in this case must be the result of the function unique you already have here. You can ignore the remaining optional arguments in this case, close brackets and press enter. Your unique list of 13 countries is now organized on an alphabetical order from Argentina to USA. The third and final step is to adapt the source of your data list. For example, let's get back to the end of this dataset and insert a bunch of letters A in this field, country name and in this row 63. 
We can see this blue mark also moved down one row. As Excel understands, I want to expand this table. Let's now check what happens to our unique list. We can see it has been correctly adapted with this new country name added at the top here. And we now have 14 unique countries instead of 13. Note, however, that to accommodate this new country in this first position, Excel has pushed one row down all the other countries of the unique list, and this has an effect in the drop-down list source. So, if I select the cell H3 and access again this data validation menu, I can see that the field source is still statically linked to this range K4 to K16, which represents the initial 13 unique countries identified in the part 1 of this video. To make sure this source automatically expands whenever your unique list expands, you need then to select this first cell of your unique list and insert the hashtag symbol. This is the way Excel can understand you are linking your source to an array function, which is the case here. We can cover more details around array formulas and functions in another video, but for now, click on OK to check the results. If you then expand this drop-down list, you can see the new country was correctly inserted here at the top, and you can also see at the bottom of the list that USA is showing up here as well, as this list expanded automatically. All three steps to create an automatic drop-down list are done. So, let's complete our initial example by copying this new data at the bottom of this spreadsheet and paste it in this part of your original dataset using the paste special command. Remember that Switzerland must now automatically show up in your drop-down list. If you go back to the top of your spreadsheet, the first thing we can note is that Switzerland is showing up in this unique list in this position down here. Finally, as we correctly linked the source of our drop-down to these array functions, you also be able to find that new country in this drop-down list. We can then select this country and we can be sure the result of this function down here is correct, as the range arguments are also linked to an Excel table, which automatically expanded when the new data was received. So, if you structure your spreadsheet this way, you only need to follow these three steps once and have your drop-down list automatically updated for any new data you get. From now on, make sure you take advantage of this important Excel tool and let me know in the comment sections below three examples of where you, you use drop-down lists. If you want to learn more about Excel and become an advanced Excel user, go to kinens.com and enroll in the training Excel Master. It's a 14-hour training program dedicated for those who want to become advanced Excel users and save time at work. The program contains several resources and gives you access to an exclusive forum for questions. It's your chance to dominate Excel. See you in class.